I think Misanthropony put it best when he said, Fuck this movie. No, seriously. Fuck this movie. Fuck this movie to hell and back and fuck everything in it. Yeah, Blue Sky and Fox. You should have ended this franchise with Ice Age 4. It might not have been a good movie, but it was still a guilty pleasure. And it's better than this space junk. Now let's get into our rockets and dive right in. The story this time has Scrat go on a spaceship after his shenanigans with his acorn. Despite the fact that a spaceship was only used for a visual gag in the first movie. Aliens should not need to be a thing in the Ice Age franchise just because that one-off gag gained a positive reception. While that's going on, Manny has forgotten his anniversary with Ellie and lots of meteors start falling towards Earth. Sadly, that doesn't kill them all instantly, even though it would have ended the movie a lot faster. Buck returns to the surface where he says that it's, and I quote, all part of a prophecy. So they have to get to the landing site in order to hopefully stop it. Let's go through the awesome points. There is not much for me to say other than the animation is lovely, but it always has been for the last four movies. What I love the most about this animation is that the space rocks have a wide range of colors in its fire and textures in the rocks to make it look dangerous. Sadly, good animation is not going to save a bad story. Speaking of which, the story is just not good. It focuses too much on comedy and very little on plot development which could have made the meteor chase exciting. And there's a subplot that takes too much of the runtime, which consists of Manny and Ellie being clingy towards their daughter due to Manny not really liking Julian, voiced by Adam Devine, who would later voice Sam I Am in Green Eggs and Ham, Diego and Shira wanting kids, which doesn't go anywhere, and the fact that they had to give Sid a girlfriend, which, while I don't mind, it just feels like it's there to pad out the runtime and nothing more. Speaking of the comedy, it's not actually funny. Like, there are a few moments that make me chuckle, like, Hurry, Granny! Don't you uh, hurry me! I've been struck by lightning more times! Uh, Granny! That you've had hot breakfasts! Yep, it's definitely over! <laughs> Except for that one. But the rest of them are as unfunny as mammoth fur. Not to mention the scrat cutaways are turned into plot armor for the main characters. Where things go better for the characters or worse for the characters, now scrat seems like the reason the Earth is what it is as we know it, why the Earth is in continents, and now why the solar system is what it is. It was rather better when scrat was doing his own thing and was simply living a simple life. Manny, on the other hand, while I thought his character change was alright in the last movie, he's an insufferable moron and jackass, and he has to be written to follow three cliches. The new characters are even less interesting than last time with a few exceptions. Julian is somewhat better than Ethan. I say somewhat because while he can be a bit annoying and says too much hip to the point where those phrases aren't even a thing yet, he's fun, hilarious, and I want to see him be with Peaches. Brooke is alright as a character, and Jessie J does a lovely performance for her, but there's something I've now noticed. You know how the past two female characters had something to parallel the main characters? Ellie, despite thinking she's a possum, it made sense since she was an orphan but had found a better family with Crash and Eddie, while Manny lost his family to the humans which made him bitter. Shira joined the good side after learning that friendships have more importance than loyalty to your own kind. When you think about it, Diego didn't start off as a good guy either. He was the most loyal to the leader of his pack, Soto, and was tasked in taking the baby to him so he'd have his revenge, but got sidetracked by Manny and Sid, which after the journey to find the humans made him feel guilty after Manny saved him from the lava. So Diego betrays Soto and protects both Manny and the baby. However, Brooke doesn't parallel Sid, which is a missed opportunity in the story. Sid's family abandoned him and was treated horribly by his family, all because they think he might be holding them back. Brooke, on the other hand, is bubbly, friendly, and has a perfect life with the Geotopians. It would have been so cool to have expanded chemistry between Sid and Brock. Otherwise, what was the point in that? Sadly, the other Geotopians just suck. The bunny is not that interesting, and Shangri-Lama, he jokes way too much, he's stuck up, and he gets more unlikable when he refuses to help out with the asteroids and gets angry over Geotopia being destroyed. Now, there are other things I like as well, like Geotopia looks beautiful with its crystal-like magic and the climax is a little tense. Even the ending is decent. 
Overall, while there are some things to like about this, like the animation and the visuals, it just doesn't make up for the bad writing and not very good humour. It could have been better if there was more thought put into writing the script, I'll explain later in another video. But it's just pretty bad. I would be more forgiving with this concept if they saved this story for an original story with different characters. But because they had to put Ice Age in the title, we went from a trio of misfits bringing back a baby back to its family, to magical crystals giving everlasting youth. I have no shame in this when I give Ice Age 5 Collision Course a 3 out of 10 with the first official ribbon of disgrace. I'm not sure if even the Martians would even watch this movie. So there's only one thing to do. Now stay tuned for next time when I take down a charging bull, Ferdinand.